Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top headlines today. Beginning in Northeast Nebraska, where the Nebraska State Patrol has released a little more information about two separate plane crashes that happened within 50 miles of each other. One of the pilots has since been pronounced dead. Troopers in Knox County Sheriff's deputies say they responded to the first crash about four miles southwest of Crofton at about 930 Monday morning. Authorities say they found the pilot and pronounced him dead at the scene. The pilot was the lone occupant of the plane at the time. Uh, details on the other crash, the one you see here, the Wayne County plane crash, still limited. Authorities continuing to investigate there. The National Transportation Safety Board says they're investigating both crashes in northeast Nebraska. Severe storms Monday evening brought heavy hailstones to northeast Nebraska. Check out these images shared by storm chasers to social media on Monday. These are from Holt County. Widespread reports of hailstones about four inches in diameter. It's the size of a softball. There were no reports of widespread damage, but as you can see, the stones did crack windshields of rural residents. The storms continued on into Pierce County, where reports of tennis ball-sized hail came in near the town of Osmond. Forecasters say the severe weather is expected to move out of Nebraska for the foreseeable future, with a chance of scattered thunderstorms returning on Thursday. And while Northeast Nebraska certainly got its fair share of severe weather on Monday, Nebraska wasn't alone. For some, it was extreme heat. For others, it was damage from landslides. John Lawrence has more. Parts of Ketchikan, Alaska, destroyed by a major landslide. This has happened. The just went down. At least one person is confirmed dead and others are injured after the landslide hit the southern part of the state Sunday. These people being impacted are our friends. So, of course, it's a, it's a, it's a big issue. It's a, something heartfelt. And, uh, but we're going to pull together, and that's what we've always done is pull together as a community, and we're going to take care of each other. Alaska Governor Mike Dunleavy issued a disaster declaration and evacuations remain in place as officials fear another landslide is possible. Ketchikan Mayor Dave Kiffer, a 65-year resident of the city, said he's, quote, never seen a slide of this magnitude. Meanwhile, more than 2,300 miles away in Motown, a different dilemma. It's not the way you want to start off the school year, but we can't control the weather. The first two days of school in the Detroit district were cut short this week due to what the district claims is, quote, inadequate cooling and the soaring temperatures. All the kids want to come to get an education, but we can't because of the weather. Right. It would have been better if school started back after the holiday. A similar situation in Philadelphia, where 63 schools are ending three hours early, two days this week, because of the high heat. I'm John Lawrence reporting. One man's getting medical treatment after a fight escalated to a shooting early Monday. It happened in Grand Island. Police say they were called to the scene at a house immediately north of Grand Island Senior High School. A news release says 45-year-old Jose Argueta Hernandez and 81-year-old Gerber Perez Vasquez were fighting when Perez Vasquez drew a gun and shot Argueta Hernandez in the shoulder. An ambulance eventually transported Argueta Hernandez to a hospital. Perez Vasquez turned himself in and was arrested. He faces three counts, including felony assault. Police also cited Argueta Hernandez for a misdemeanor. A teen, meanwhile, in custody following a weekend stabbing. It happened at a campground just south of Columbus. The Platte County Sheriff's Office says a 20-year-old woman had been stabbed in her upper arm. She was initially hospitalized in Columbus, but then life flighted to Omaha with what were called critical injuries. Sheriff's officials say a teen girl caused the injury. She fled the scene. Found later by Columbus police, she now faces felony assault and weapon counts. A Biden administration immigration program that would give spouses of U.S. citizens legal status without having to leave the country has been temporarily paused. The Department of Homeland Security had already begun taking applications for the program called Keeping Families Together, while well, Texas and 15 other states challenged the new policy. A federal judge in Texas on Monday ordered a two-week stay of approving any applications while the court weighs the merits of the case. President Joe Biden announced the program in June that could help up to half a million 
undocumented immigrants. It offers spouses of U.S. citizens without legal status who've been living in the U.S. for at least 10 years a path to citizenship. The spouses could wait in the U.S. during the process of applying for a green card instead of the traditional process of having to leave the U.S. sometimes for years and being separated from family. Nebraska's leaders say they believe a new economy is taking shape and it's putting agriculture in front. In fact, Governor Jim Pillen says the bio economy is the economy. State officials say it means exploring how the state can feed the world and fuel the future while contributing to a cleaner environment. Pillen made the Nebraska Bioeconomy Initiative a focal point of his Ag and Economic Development Summit in Kearney this month. Julie Bichelle is the leader of the initiative. It means that it is Nebraska's time to put our name on the map. It is our time to give agriculture the power in the market. And by that, I mean getting out of commodity agriculture and adding value to all of our products. It's the first time we've ever seen the general consumer, the millennials, look for bio-based products. We need to connect them to how and where it came from. It is our time to tell the story. Pill and Bichelle listed examples of the bioeconomy's impact, pointing to projects under construction like the $750 million fertilizer plant in Gothenburg and a $600 million renewable diesel plant in Hastings. Just this month, the state partnered to announce a sustainable aviation fuel plant coming to Phelps County that will supply a reported 650 jobs and a $300 million climate pollution reduction grant from the EPA. Michelle says the next step is to tell Nebraska's story in an effort to secure more projects. An elected official credited with getting her office back on track is stepping down. Lincoln County commissioners on Monday accepted the resignation of County Treasurer Alex Grisulo. She was appointed to the post in 2021 after the previous treasurer, Shelley Franzen, was arrested for theft and official misconduct. She eventually pleaded no contest to a misdemeanor and served a year of probation. A county official said Monday, Gershulo brought stability to the county treasurer's office. Every week when we get the revenue reports, I think my coworkers were glad to hear me say how much revenue you're investing the county funds brought into office. So we will miss you. Gershulo's resignation takes effect September 24th. The county Monday approved appointing Deputy Treasurer Sherry Newton to fill the spot permanently. Changes continuing to a city park in Beatrice. Hannibal Park has a new parking area, which is nearly complete. The city has been using lodging tax revenue and private support through naming rights and advertising donations from various companies to assist in making improvements to Hannibal. The Improvements estimated to be done by next summer, according to a recent city administration report. For Nebraskans in Paris, as the U.S. Paralympic Games open Wednesday, the 225-member U.S. team includes four athletes that have called the Cornhusker State home. Norfolk High grad Talia Williams, a Paralympian for the third time. The Doan College grad competes in the long jump, where she finished fourth in the 2020 Games. She was world champ in the event in 2017. Natalie Schneider of Syracuse, a Paralympian for the fifth time on the U.S. wheelchair basketball team. She's a three-time medalist, winning gold with the U.S. in 2008 and 2016. The U.S. finished with bronze in 2020. Lincoln East grad Laura Webster will be a part of Paralympic sitting volleyball for the sixth time. She's trying to help the U.S. win its third straight gold in the event. And Omaha native Ava Houston making her second appearance at the Paralympics. She was sixth in the 800-meter wheelchair race and eighth in the 100 in 2020. And finally, both CNN and Fox News have weighed in on the next topic. It's not a political story, don't worry. We're talking about a polarizing hairstyle. Mullets seem to be making a comeback. Our Casey Wannenberg takes us now to an event in the Sand Hills that's all business in the front and party in the back. During the Hay Springs Friendly Festival, 
the small Sand Hills town more than doubles in size. This by far is the biggest event that we have all year. From live music to vendors and bounce houses, the festival offers a little something for everyone. It's like a fashion show. But this year brought a new hair-raising twist. Can I go ahead and just... A mullet competition. I like my hair. Can I see your hair? Yeah. Is the mullet making a comeback? Heck yeah. There's like six of us on the football team. The only thing I don't like about it is having to take care of it. Just soap, conditioner, and comb it a lot. And I put some product in it that we get from my barber. That's a little John Daly hairdo right there. That one's fancy. While some of the contestants are fresh to the business in the front, party in the back style. I grew it specifically for this. Others have been rocking their mullets for months. I've had it for about a year. I tried a mullet once before and then it just, it just didn't work out. But then I tried it again just for the mullet contest. And I decided just to keep it. It's not only the contestants who had to do some work preparing for the competition, but also the MC. Here is a true definition of the Blake Shelton. Did a little bit of research there that's uh, looking up the history of the mullet there and, you know, just kind of looking at some of the uh, good mullets of the past. Wait a second, wait a second. That is the Joe Dirte right there. MC Greg Yonker says he was most surprised by the mullet's roots in history. It actually goes back, uh, clear back into uh, the Roman era. As for the overall winner of this follicle fest, that is really the prize went to Jace Sherbars. Yeah, it's not even. It's not it's even? No. Does that make it better if it's not even? I don't know. I think we might have an imposter here. Hold on. But wait, whether wait. perfectly even or delightfully uneven, these guys believe they're all winners on this hot day. After all, the mullet offers the perfect combo, shielding your neck from the sun while keeping sweaty strands out of your face. It needs to come back in style, I believe. Just like the hairstyle. In Hay Springs, where mullets flow as freely as the summer breeze. Casey Wunnenberg, News Channel, Nebraska. I wonder if I should get a mullet. Well, I'll think about that. While I do that, you head to newschannelnebraska.com where you can stay up to date with the very latest. There you can also follow us on X, like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.